Dan Tokar here at the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. And today on a Blacksmith's Dictionary, I'm going to show you how to tie a Turk's head knot in a piece of quarter inch round stock. It's a real knot, not a fake knot. It's not just a pile of squiggly things all balled up. It is a real knot. Now there are at least three different kinds of knots that I know of uh, that are called Turk's head knots. And I am going to tie one of them in a piece of rope to show you the basic idea. And then we're going to make this one to show you how to do it in steel. Now, as an illustration for how this knot works in rope, I've got a piece of 3 8 inch nylon rope here, none too clean, but I'm going to tie a Turk's head knot in it. And this is a useful thing for you to know in any event because Turk's head knots really work well for a lot of things. So the first thing you do is you make a loop with the short end underneath and then you make a second loop and make what I call the pretzel. You make make this shape that looks like a pretzel and remember that the short end is always the one that starts off underneath. So then I take this short end and I go over the long end under the first ear of the pretzel over, under, over just like that and that is a Turk's head knot before it's, as they say in the knot world, upset. Because when you upset the knot, it turns into a ball. But when it's flat, it's actually a fairly nice interlacement. So just because I'm showing you how to do the knot, the, uh, the interlacement, which is the knot before it's pulled on and upset, is actually a nice design too. So you could keep the knot flat on the bar and you've got a nice ringerlink viking celtic kind of interlacement but if you shorten the legs and pull on both ends you'll find out that as the uh, slack comes out of the knot they do talk about upsetting the ball that uh, that basically when all the slack comes out of this knot it goes from being a flat interlacement to being a ball. Okay, we've got a little more slack and all I'm doing is pulling out the slack and working it to, the, to a free end and it's either end, both ends. You start one side in the middle and you're going for a nice even knot and once you get it fairly tight, you try and smush it a little bit to uh, even out the tension. and you end up with a knot. And that's a Turk's head knot. Some people will take a fid on a Turk's head knot like this and work the center open a little bit and feed the short end through the center
So if you take your fid and make a hole through the center of the knot and bring the shirt in through, you can have a standing knot, a knot that's on a line. And it looks like that line goes right through the center, but that's got that whole knot tied around it. So like this is the shirt end that's gone through a hole in the center of the knot that I've poked with my fid. So I'm going to start with uh, about a two foot length of quarter inch round, just because it's a convenient size to have a handle on. And it's small enough that I can work this quickly. It's possible to do this in larger stock, but it does take longer. So just for the purposes of demonstration, we're going to do a small knot. This is a piece of 7 8 inch stock that I'm going to use as a mandrel to make the first loops. So it's nothing except a piece of convenient scrap stock, but you want to have something that's um, going to make fairly small loops relative to the size of the stock, otherwise you'll have way too much slack to try and take out of the knot in the end part. So this for quarter inch something around 7 eighths to an inch is is about the right size. Now I've heated up maybe 8 inches or so of the rod, I clamp it with a vice grip on one side, and I want you to notice that I start my wind underneath over and out like that, and I want it not to be quite too uh, there. We've got that. Kind of looks like one of those springs on one of those exercise grip grip master kind of things. Now, if I was really going at speed, I would have had this hot enough and uh, been able to squeeze it. Uh, but because I was showing you the, this thing on camera, I'm gonna have to get it hot again. I don't need the mandrel anymore. So I'll take that out of the vise, and I'm going to get this close to the stock size because what I'm going to do is stick the rod in here so that I can adjust the loops. pair of tongs to kind of squeeze this thing in a little bit. If I can actually get a grip on. Yes, Dan, get a grip. All right, it cools off quickly. There we go.
Yeah. Why am I using a pair of tongs to hit this with? That is a good question. But anyway, what I end up with is what I think of as the pretzel. So I take my little funny peen hammer here and start to drive those loops down into each other. And this is just going to make it easier for me to get my drift, my little fid, started in here because this is really a very small uh, drift. And the idea is, is that I will be able to thread it through there. But that's what it looks like right now. I stick this in the vise again because it helps keep everything from going everywhere while I'm working on it. See how I'm using this as a fid to align the loops. And the idea is, is that I will have a straight passage through the loops. And again, you're losing heat very quickly because it's small stock. So that's where I am right now. And another heat to pull these into a line and then I'll drive the drift through. You start getting what looks sort of like baseball seams. Still not quite ready to get the uh, the fid through. Aha! See, once I get the point to the point, get to the point where the point is there. Yes, I'll be able to tap that through. But you notice how I'm getting more and more of sort of a spherical shape out of that as I pull the ears around. down and you can see I've just about got the pathway I want and I can now take my hammer and just I have now made a pathway through the knot for the last 
part of the rod to go through. That um, fid is actually a quarter inch drift, so I now have a quarter inch hole that goes through the center of the knot for the rod. And we're going to take this small short standing end and heat it up and pull it through and that will make the knot. Okay, in order to be able to pull the knot tight, I'm going to cool off the body of the knot, stick this in the vise, grab this and make a nice tight loop. Aha! You can see that's pointing toward the hole through the center of the knot. And I wanted it to be fairly tight bent down there because this is the loop that has to feed through. So we're going to heat just that loop up as much as we can. kind of awkward to work this close to the camera, but you can start to see I've got the first it's threaded through, I just have to keep persuading it close up the loop. And once I get enough of a stub through there, I will be able to pull. It does not take long to heat these things up. So I'm still trying to make that go around as tight as is practical. I can now grab that and I will wiggle it a little bit to help the alignment and even back it up a little bit. Because ideally you want that to be down on the bottom and a straight shot for the uh, loop to go through. And you can see we now have a tail and what I'll do is heat this loop up as much as I can and grab that and actually pull it through. Something to help hold it in place. Well, I actually pull. Let me see how that actually pulls through because I'm wiggling it a little bit as I pull. And then I can tighten it up a little bit with the ball peen hammer because that way the next run will be a little. Easier. We're almost all the way through.
Okay, we're gonna put that there, and we're still working to try and keep pull the loop through. Each time I do this, I get it a little tighter. And sometimes I use the tongs to make the loops smaller because part of the problem is is that this stuff is not quite as easy to pull through as a rope is. All right. So you need to help it a little bit, like with the tongs. And I think I can just sort of squeeze that a little bit. Might be too cold. And it's going a little bit. So I'll have to heat it, and then I will just keep squeezing it with the tongs a little bit until I take the slack out. to support it a little bit because when you pull it it does tend to grab a bit so sometimes you just have to grab parts of the knot and squeeze and that helps tighten up and I think I've got enough of the slack out of the knot that I can now pull the two ends down to each other you can see you've got got quite a knot and what we're going to do is just continue squeezing the slack out when it gets hot I can do this with a ball peen hammer I'm going to heat this up again and take some of the slack out I'm not clamping it in the vise. I'm leaving the vise slack enough that I can actually drive the rod. All right, I think that's gotten a lot of the slack out. Now we're going to use a little cup swage um, in the anvil to round out and tighten up the ball. It's good to try and heat the ball as evenly as possible so that everything will tighten up evenly. And I'm just gently tapping it, which will help take the slack out, tighten up the knot, 
not distort the rods too much. Sometimes you have to drop it through the uh, pitchel hole and help tighten it up from that side. Now that's not the prettiest Turk's head knot that I've ever tied, but it is a Turk's head knot. Now I've decided I'm going to tighten things up, so I'm using a smaller um, spherical swage. This uh, this particular hardy that is probably a uh, maybe a one and an eighth inch diameter hemisphere, and I've heated this up nice and hot again. And all I'm going to do is gently tap and rotate the knot. This will tighten up the knot and also make it more spherical. And you want to do this gently uh, a little bit at a time, otherwise you will smash flats in it and it will not be pretty. You can go slowly. Okay, that's a fairly tight, that's a fairly tight Turk's head knot. This is a Turk's head knot tied in quarter inch round stock. It makes a one inch diameter knot.